My guest, good morning, everyone. Good morning. So today we're going to begin with the seminar or webinar on targeted career planning. So I would like to welcome Jashit Narula and Dr. Ashok Aroda here. Before beginning, I would like to give a brief introduction about Jashit, who is a senior career and training consultant. She has an experience around 17 years in total in career consultation, training, and uplifting youth to a professional level. Along with that, we are associated with Dr. Dr. Ashok Aroda from a good number of years, and he has been a guide and philosopher for the KR Mangalam University in terms of developing it as a better institution and as a better place and a venue for students to learn and develop. So, Jajit Ali is going to present a presentation today wherein she'll talk about the latest emerging trends in career at the same time, the contemporary professions and what all things which are required to actually gear up yourself for the upcoming non-predictable future. So Jashid, I'd like to hand it over to you from here and please go ahead with the presentation. All right, thank you Neil sir. It's a pleasure being here. Um, so I'm going to talk about, uh, you know, that what career path is uh, important, how important it is to go about it and it, how it, the value it holds in our life when we go forward. So everybody in life with a good job or a business which provides us security and satisfaction, we all want that. But the here is a challenge where we, you know, today think about that how important it is to, you know, choose the right path and how to go about it. In Kera Manglam, we are equipped to provide you with that path where learning and acquiring skills for that career path, which will help you reaching your goals. You know, it'll help you to provide that extra edge that when, you know, in future, the new skills, new uh, era which is coming up and how should we equipped with that. There are a lot of crossroads. One comes and we have to choose based on our past experience or by looking at others. We have so many people in our, you know, close vicinity where we see that that person is doing so well, how that person has reached that path. How can I become like that person? Of course, yes. Some, you know, make career choices by chance. Some make career choices by, you know, choice. And then there are consequences for the both. It is either good and bad, but how we make the choices will also determine that how we keep our peace of mind later ahead. So today we all have the opportunity to make this choice to see beyond and above, which will help you know, keep your interest and yet have an insight to what we're going to change in future. We all have seen and heard about you know, people with wonderful jobs, businesses. They think that you know, we, how they have reached there, let me do this course, I will reach to that thing. Let me do this, let me do that. We're always in that confusion, right? So as you know, we keep on thinking, right? So we always say that it is good to aspire. It is good to think like that, but always keep your interest and always keep your, you know, uh, the mind that background that we have and we have to take care of that and thinking of that that skill that we have to develop to reach to that level we have to keep that in mind the skill that at kr mangalam we are equipped to provide you with all that skill where you want to reach to your goals the earlier you're on that path to the future the better it is so for example if you're doing any you know course in kr mangalam it is better to have an organization where it is also helping you to reach that goal side by side. You will be at the right, you, you know, you have to be the right person with the right skill set for the right job. So that combination later on brings you all that satisfaction, job security that we all talk about these days. You know, we always say that if, you know, if we run for money, probably we might not have that peace of mind. If you take an informal career, choice based so you have aptitude and if you have the right personality then you peace of mind and then the money will definitely going to follow we here at kl mangalam have futuristic progress progressive forces which prefer and prepare you for tomorrow's industries and needs so here are uh, some... yes ma'am i yes. like to say a few words over here yes. before we yes. go further uh, well, friends, uh, very good morning. Uh, 
you see we are we are here uh, to discuss the term targeted career planning so there are there are three words to it you know target there is career and there is planning and all three are very very important right so first is very important everybody thinks of career right but the career comes to them either through their friends they think okay my friend is doing something like this or my dad says something like this right so we are influenced from here and there and we just we choose we 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 take that stream and all that but here what exactly we are doing is it is not only the under the influence of someone but actually you are targeting now what does targeting means very clearly there is a goal and when we talk of goal or target before you uh, you are having certain skill sets with you to reach on to that uh, goal or target right and uh, another thing which is very clear is that when you have a goal that goal is decided by prior information so it is not like somebody is setting a goal for you you yourself decide the goal and when you decide the goal you take full responsibility for it when you take full responsibility for it you are constantly equipping yourself you are polishing your abilities you are upscaling yourself right so our focus is very clear that we help you to choose your target and then plan towards that target so here is something very important you choose your target and that is a well informed target regarding your career and then you plan for it because you may decide that i want a certain thing but you need to work for it action is required skills are required expertise is required and all that so we provide all three we let you know what career options are open we let you know how to decide your target there comes the role of guidance and we help you to plan towards it and acquire the necessary skills so over to ma'am right thank you sir that's a very good input uh, in fact if you would see our courses here everyone then you can see that how well they are you know equipped with and how well they are targeted towards the future we keep on revising them and seeing them if you would go through them you would see how well they are in line with the careers options that are going to come ahead and this is all based on the research work that happens industry research that shows that that in future there are going to be careers that we will have to focus on are not going to be the same that we have today the times are definitely changing post covid things have really changed we have equipped ourselves to you know study in fact on um, computers laptops everywhere and uh, you know the world has really opened up and we have to see what is lying in future and how we can go about it right sir so if we talk about the conventional way which is a scope and option one can obviously go for higher studies and obviously go government uh, sector is the one which is very lucrative and everybody looks forward for it whoever is doing engineering these days would well love to sit for gate either for going for higher studies or either getting into psus or even giving banking exam defense services insurance railway here um, sir i would like your input saying that uh, you know we how we prepare our students for government sectors ahead mm. you see uh, usually students when they have to prepare for the government sector what do they do is they first complete their graduation okay any right. course which is the basic required suppose you want to go for ias or ips and all that so you choose a particular stream and you do the graduation but in kr mangalam we are very different okay 
And yes. second thing which I have seen with the students is that they will choose a stream and then they will go for coaching centers outside, right after the uh, your regular class hours, you know, and uh, would take coaching. Now what happens is there is often a clash between the two because the university has its own calendar, own schedule, own assignments, right? And that coaching institute has its own. So usually there is a lot of clash. And whenever there is a clash, who is uh, suffering the most? The student. So either that student is paying a lot of attention towards your academics, or the student happened to pay attention more towards the competitive exam. So what we have done in KR Manglam is that we have uh, uh, our collaboration with very leading, uh, mm, uh, you know, coaching institutes, you can say coaching academies we have, which prepare, help our students prepare for those exams. And they don't have to go outside the campus. It is done very well within the time timings uh, of the university itself, right? So there is no clash between this. And this preparation starts from the day the student enters the university, if he or she decides to join the, uh, the career options one has chosen is a government job itself. So our preparation is simultaneous. Our preparation is linked with the course. Our preparation is... Third thing which is very important in our preparation is that we are regularly assessing, right? So it's not like this that uh, you, you are given a coaching and after that, so there will be a material available to you. There would be tests going on <coughs> simultaneously <coughs> whereby you can understand that where do you stand, right? Uh, as far as your preparation is concerned. Neeraj sir, would you like to add to it? Yeah, sure, sir. Uh, so here in Kerala Mangalam, as you only suggested that, we have a separate department for training. And then training department is exclusively preparing students for future avenues. So be it into government job preparation or be it a private sector unit preparation, we help students to help them to prepare for cross-industry skills and industry-specific skills. So we on and off invite trainers and visitors from corporates and preparation units to help our students to prepare their path, help them with the content, and also help them to prepare on the tips which are required to get through with these government and competitive examinations. There can be three categories of every student to choose their career path. First one could be government examination or competitive examination. Second one could be going abroad for higher studies or going for higher studies in India itself. And third would be looking for an employment. So we divide students into three basic categories. And then according to the division of the category, we help the student to prepare for the future. So let's say if somebody has chosen for going for abroad, so we help the student with the content related to IELTS. We help the student content related to finding the right university for the course he's opting for. And we also help the student to find out the right consultant or the connect person who can guide him through the process. Similarly, for competitive examinations, once the student gets through with the graduation or uh, the certification goes, they start preparing for it. And then you rightly suggested here and rightly mentioned that we here in KR Mangalam University, we actually help the student to prepare it right from the beginning of his graduation, the time he is into the curriculum of the academics, we help them start providing them the content from the very beginning so that by the time he reaches the, to the filing of that particular examination, he is well equipped with all the information and knowledge required to get through with this, that examination. And that ultimately, you know, uh, the conversion ratio brings up too high for that. Right. So, uh, sir, is it confined only to the written examinations also uh, only or we go beyond for the interviews as well? Sir, we go beyond. We This is not just for the written examination. Let's, like I suggested for some people going for government competitive examination, their first step is probably a written examination. When some students which are going for some private jobs for, you know, jobs into multinationals, 
they are trained on cross industry skills now let's talk about cross industry skills what are those skills skills which are required to get through in any kind of interview any kind of industry any kind of forte so these could be your communication these could be your personality these could be writing a better resume these could be your emergence presence online on job professional portals this could be your you know introduction the way you introduce yourself your skills related to communication skills related to team dynamics so in this category in this criteria we train all the students and ultimately they are trained for gdpi group discussion personal interview skills as well wherein not just for the written examination going beyond the written examination the final round is generally found to be one panel interview with be it a government examination or a private you know, uh, private uh, employment so which is very important where they just the students knowledge presentation you know logical reasoning and the way the student express and have an idea of creative thinking creative logical reasoning about it so we train students from the very beginning till the end we hold the fingers provide them the right content and make them a self made product so it is actually a very uh, well thought out uh, strategy right and it is through that we carry our students to a very logical conclusion of joining a job of their own choice that means placement is a very very important aspect uh, and we start taking care of it the day you join the university is, is it so uh, near sir sir can you please it was a little uh, Mm. Issue with the. Uh, can you repeat the question? So uh, I said that uh, you see, it is not an ad hoc approach. Ours is a very systematic, well thought out, well organized way of working, right? And the day you join us, we start holding your fingers, and we ensure. Right, I, I, got your point. I got your point. I got your point here, sir. Yeah, so it is a very well planned curriculum. It is inculcated into the curriculum, and it is from the name of employability skills and school of work life skills, wherein it is not just related to the academics, but beyond academics. If some student is aiming for research, if some student is aiming for higher studies, if some student is simply aiming for employment with multinational, we have separate modules, and they are into the system. They are into the curriculum of the university, and the the staff or the team which works on those modules what which trains the student are not the part of academics they are separate exclusive subject matter experts which are on role of the university and whenever it is required we call people from the industry itself so let's say when there are students who are appearing for the pre final year of engineering or we start training them right beginning of the fourth semester to them so we start training them on the patterns of multinational organizations like Wipro, IBM, Birla Soft, Infosys, TCS. What kind of patterns these companies have, and what kind of questions they ask? So, right from the beginning of the fourth semester in engineering, we start training these. We start giving inputs, let's say twice a week, to these students. By the time they reach in the seventh semester, they are provided with a complete boot camp input. Boot camp is a full day training program which includes cross industry skills, like skills which I told, like interview skills, communication skills. Writing a better resume plus industry specific skills. Yeah, industry. We can say that technical skills. We train them on technical skills. For the engineering student, could be Python, Java, C, analytics, and all these new world skills which are required to get into a multinational. So it is not just an event; it's a process which begins on in a very early period of the student's process of academics. so here it is not a program where we train students just for in a workshop model but we also organize in regular and in, in uh, regular and continuous classes right from the beginning of the course so uh, that was i think ma'am uh, i think right, it really sir. answers yes. your question that right, how sir. do we prepare our students that's right sir so similarly i think that also covers my industry point of view where uh, you know there are jobs in production research and services and one can obviously um, take a you know conventional way talking about um, getting into teaching for government and private jobs which are also in abundance but everyone is looking for the right skill set for that as well
right sir so these are some uh, industry co collaboration that we have at our, at our university and um, uh, we will talk about this more uh, we also talk about it that 65 percent of uh, tomorrow's workers will you know have jobs that do not exist today we should always prepare ourselves and you know uh, we would we should see that uh, you know after pandemic after pandemic, so many um, startups even startups which were doing a different kind of uh, you know they were in production or manufacturing or they were into retail sector a lot of them have today shut down so we always have to expect the unexpected there were so many who were you know sacked out of the jobs and that this i'm talking about according to the popular estimated report by the world economic forum we always have to expect the unexpected the labor market is going to shift and change totally the way we work today the skill set we have today may not work for the future the future skill set is going to be definitely different according to the new generation the gen z that we talk about gen z that we have to see and focus are going to have so much of technological you know aspects uh, which are which are going to change and are already changing if we see uh, by the time we are talking. Very rightly, very. I have a point to make here, ma'am. So it is very uh, rightly said that you cannot predict the dynamics of future. So right. since you can, you take you take a very simple example, a very simple example of um, uh, COVID. So like before two years, we all were of course uh, aware about the online uh, education systems, online portals. And then all of a sudden, when the COVID hits in, all the institutions and education took a great hit back and but stood back just because of this technology where we can be online and you know uh, communicate and educate our students. And a lot of uh, education, training and skilling happened because of this. Yes. So similarly, in the future also, you never know, like very well, good, good example of that in the um, early 90s, um, when uh, Panama and many airlines in US were raising their rates, and all of, a, all of a sudden somebody introduced video conferencing, so that became obsolete because Correct. nobody start, start, traveled by planes anymore. So they were raising their uh, uh, rates, ticket rates every day. So that became obsolete, and people started doing video conferencing. So that kind of obsoleted it. Similarly, like in 90s, people used to wear a lot of watches and very expensive watches considered as a sign of richness. And then all of a sudden we were introduced to mobile phones and we lost the term of lost watches at all. So that again obsoleted. Mm -hmm. Similarly, also, you never know that what becomes obsolete, what becomes non that not that important in coming times, because the future seems to be so dynamic and we are changing in hours. Previously, uh, which was changing in years, months. Now, the, the change has been rapid. It is changing in hours. So I, here, I would like to give a point to our students and participants that be geared up for any kind of change which is going to be very, very in the recent future. Very yeah. recent future, you might have to shift to your shift to your focuses, shift to your paradigms, shift to your learning, skilling, your inclination. You never know because the, the, the world seems too much dynamic right after this COVID. I would you, ma'am. Uh, even I would like to add on this that um, uh, you know, small things like wearing mask, the production of mask which did not exist at all before COVID has suddenly taken such an impact on our lives. How many people who were into uh, you know designing clothes and designing others things suddenly they had stopped. And suddenly they were producing different kind of masks. They were, you know, a, 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 do you know even Manish Malhotra today has its own brand of masks only. So things are changing where we can expect that, uh, you know, we should in fact just expect the unexpected. Anything and everything can happen. And we have to be a little more prepared toward it. We know how the industry is trending we know how it is, where it is going, and we can prepare ourselves a little more, a better way, so that tomorrow when something like this again happens, because if you've heard the latest trend is the monkeypox is uh, taking over our society again. And if something like that happens today, we have to be prepared for something else again. 
So now we have to pay attention to how the technology is going to impact the industries and industries are going to have jobs related to the technology mainly. These days, people working with IT sector are mainly working from home. They don't need that big offices or they don't need to give those rentals to the big offices. They can, they can do without it and save that money and production and their turnover increases. And the same thing, they can hire more people and uh, you know, make the business more worth of their time. And we also know that down the road, we have to you know, anticipate the industries that might be impacted the most. It is important that we make our career decisions according to that impact and according to that te technology that is going to happen. We also need to have those uh, human skills that we all talk about. So most of the time they're going to, if you see that uh, things are used by interface now, everything has, a, it, it, the, the example that you were giving about the watch, now we have smart watches where the interface is totally changed. <clears throat> most of us uh, use it for fitness as well, tracking our health. Now uh, there is so many other things that are being added into every day, Alexa or anything that you might, might say. This is all based on interface and inter use experience that a customer or a consumer has. According to that, industry is going to build more things on that, are going to work more on it. According to that, we need to focus on cultivating, you know, soft skills that we have. The skill set where it is futuristic, we have to have more compassion, empathy, and we have to have our competitiveness that is going to carry on for future. What I what I personally understand, ma'am, here is that it is not just learning the technology would do these days. But the application of technology should also be learned pretty well. See here in, in, in KR Mangalam, what we are doing with the students is I'll put, put over my point being director trainings. I have also introduced few things and which were already existing with the students here. So we are trying to not just make the student learn the technology, but also help the student to how to apply that technology to get the optimum solution out of it. So we are also developing a sense of, uh, you know, solution provider in a student. See, you can always find somebody who can write a code, but you also need to generate that thought in the student that somebody who has written the code can be applied to solve what kind of issues and what kind of connectivities. So we here in the training department, time to time, do a lot of brainstorming with our, uh, you know, uh, senior members like Dr. Ashok Karoda and many others of them to understand to develop and devise a curriculum of training where we create wisdomized humans who actually don't know, have the knowledge, but also know how to apply that knowledge. They know how to connect the dots. Knowledge is just like, you know, balls into uh, a big uh, glass. Once you connect them, then it becomes wisdom. Then it becomes find out the right solution to use that knowledge. So here, the major objective of Train department in KRMU is to develop that, connect that dots among so that we can provide this world, this society, an enriched resource which who can use his wisdom, his or her wisdom, to provide some solutions to the society. And since we are in an era where so many pandemics, so many dynamic changes are happening so abruptly, so fastly, and so much disruption happening, we need such individuals in coming five years for sure. And, and you know that for such things, we are coming up with so many new uh, world professions where which, which were never even existed five years back. All of a sudden, these professions seems to be so into the timeline these days. Do you mind? Right. Yes, right. I agree to what you're saying, sir. And also that I would like to add in the same thing. As the pandemic happened and as, uh, you know, we are moving towards a more virtual setup of uh, world, we're also losing our human skills because we're not in touch with so many people as you, we used to be. We're in our virtual world. So those human skills also need, you know, a lot of time to be cultivated and like communication, creativity, you know, we need interpersonal skills, um, decision-making or anything that will make us or help us take that opportunity at the right time also at KR Mangalam is developed today.
right? We also prefer and we also would want that students of today should all pursue their passion because later on, you know, shifting or diversifying is going to be very, very challenging. Uh, Ma'am, uh, uh, very well said uh, uh, that uh, the things are changing fast. Uh, so we are living in a VUCA world, which is volatile, which is unpredictable, right? Now, the thing is this, that if it is unpredictable, if it is volatile, then how I'm going to work for it? What right. is going to be the future? Yeah. So this is one aspect which is very important to discuss. So apart from the traditional and conventional jobs, uh, we started with the government jobs because they are the uh, uh, jobs most of the people know of, right? There are jobs which are really emerging, right? So I would love if you could throw some light on what kind of jobs are really emerging in the near future. Yes, sir. <clears throat> yes, sir. I'm going to come on that as well. Um, so if you would see that the 10 new careers which we, we you know, we should watch out, the number one is data scientists. They are, you know, these days, one of the fastest growing and most highly paid with huge businesses. Mostly everybody, you know, have such unstructured data. And we need, uh, you know, people who can go ahead and, you know, uh, generate insights, in fact. Uh, on data and produce us, um, you know, substantial things and we can work on it. For example, let me give you... Just easy, just easy. One question here, one, one, one question before going here. So uh, this is a question from not my perspective. I completely understand what is data science and because being into the industry from such a long year, you also, and Dr. Ashok, of course, knows everything about it. So I want you to explain it just like a very, very layman way. Something, yes. what is data and then how it how you can analysis this and how you can predict about things. Right. So I'll, I'll take an example using that. Everybody has a smartphone today. Everybody is using it, even if it's a small uh, kid from uh, any age uh, that we go on. So we keep on typing. Let's take a travel app, right? And as soon as you type that, I want to go from here to here, right? And suddenly you will notice that automatically, in my other pages, it starts showing the various rates, various um, places that I should be going, various cabs, various other transport mo uh, mediums that I can use while going. This is all done by data scientists. So what happens is as soon as we you know, uh, put our um, uh, data into it, it gets collected. And they start cleaning and churning the data. And then they start building the, uh, you know, algorithm. And then also after doing that, building it, they keep on, you know, showing us the option. As soon as they all show us the option, we tend to choose one. And there they generate the business. So for going into data scientists, one from any field, any point in time can get into data scientists. But what right. you there's, a, there's one question also is there from in the chat box from one enormous attendee that can I become a data analyst by pursuing BB in data analyst without math in 12th class? So I, I would like to answer here that, that data science, of course, math is a basic mathematics is always required, but you need to have good information about stats, you know, playing with numbers, and of course, the basic understanding with advanced Excel. So you need to have that understanding, my friend. But without having completely no information, no knowledge about math won't be possible. However, they say that anybody from anywhere can jump into data uh, analysis, data science. But math is the one basic requirement to understand data. All the 500 companies today have data scientists with them, right? So you need to have, uh, instead of strong mathematics skills, I would say you would need strong programming skills. You need to know the knowledge of Python. You need to know how R works. You need to know how SQL uh, works and you need to work on this, um, the coding and how that happens, right? Uh, you need to know how to, you know, 
uh, update, insert, and manipulate and modify the data, basically. Um, all backgrounds can go for it if you have good analytical skill and you can make something out of it. Right, sir? Anything you would like right, to right, add? Right, right, ma'am. Okay. Anything you want so, to add before I move ahead? Yeah, please go ahead. I guess this is enough for the data sciences. Okay. So here uh, is another uh, challenging uh, career, which is very creative, is UI UX designing, which is user interface and user uh, uh, Before we proceed further, because I think it's very important for the sake of students, uh, we explain very clearly uh, the difference between data analyst and a data scientist. Right. Right. So there are two fields uh, basically which are open and uh, why, why data, why? See, uh, we are into a digital world and whenever we use anything, we are creating a digital footprint, right? And whenever right, we sir. create a digital footprint, that digital footprint is traceable is recordable, right? It can be changed into uh, 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 numbers. Numerically, we know where we are, how many times I used a particular thing, where, where I used, why intentions also sometimes. Recur. So a scientist, uh, a data scientist, will use this data, whatever data is there, to provide solutions to a business, right? We, we are producing something, customers are using it. We are getting a lot of data out of it, right? Now this data is given to the data scientist. That data scientist will come out with solutions which the business need to understand very clearly to take the business to further heights. So this is what is a data scientist. Now, Coming to a data analyst, data analyst is one because data is very complex, very huge, too much of data. Now there should be someone to make it comprehensible to me, comprehensible to ordinary person, right? Arranging it in a very easy fashion so that it can be understood very easily. So data analyst role is to arrange it so that people can understand it and comprehend it very easily. That a scientist's role is to use that data, whatever is given to them, to come out with solutions, which very often the business or the organization needs to understand so that it can take, it can move ahead towards its goal, right? Now, so these are two different uh, set, and the skill sets definitely required. Basics are the same. Basics right. are the same, but you, when you decide to be a scientist, you require a little bit different kind of skills. And when you require to be an organizer only to make it arranged in a particular fashion, the skill sets required are different. Of course, you need to be are very good at analytical skills. You need to be a critical thinker. You need to be a visualizer, right? These skills are basically required. Okay, so this is what exactly is the data scientist and data analyst. Now, uh, Neeraj sir, my question is this, that uh, then we realize that this field is a really emerging field and all that, right? right so. We went into a lot of industry collaboration, particularly uh, in the, for our engineering students, our uh, BCom students, our BBA students, our MBA students and all. We went into a lot of industry collaboration. And uh, right, so. so I would like you to explain the kind of collaboration we have and how this collaboration is giving an edge to our students. Sir, lately and from the very beginning, we keep on do a lot of brainstorming for all the professional courses students and students who want to go into such competitive courses or in such competitive professions. 
we have to have some in house team and but that doesn't suffice the requirement of the student at the same time we have to look into some collaborations with the industry as well because we need real time uh, technology experts who can come down and create an academic input for our students so for that we have collaboration with semtrix we have collaboration with siemens ibm nsc and sesim and many other such industry giants who are working into such professions so we have tie ups with these they have their labs and their curriculum virtual labs with us established into our academics curriculum and there are certain credit scores associated with these courses where the student opt for such courses they are provided with such credits and we have also introduced such courses into engineering department like engineering in ai ml engineering in data analysis bsc in data structuring and bsc in it so which specifically targets such job roles and professions which are futuristic and which are the need of now and at least for next 20 years they are going to play a vital role in developing the industry or let's say the industry 4.0 they are going to be lot of requirement there is going to be lot of resource analysis for such jobs for the coming 20 years span and we are focusing we have already inculcated introduced such models which are industry academy industry academy association at the same time the exclusivity of these courses has already already been established in the university by looking the future professions in it so when a student joins in crmu so we have a complete wide range of courses available with us as ma'am was also telling that where we can tell the student to go and opt for such courses and then further going we have associations with the industry giants who follow up with those students who follow up with those uh, what do we say uh, potential aspirants for such jobs and then the latest trends in technologies are provided input through a virtual lab or a physical lab during the time of their stay in the university sir so all Thank in all so there is a network uh, yeah yeah uh, sure sir, sir. there is all in all there is a networking already been created by the trained department krmu so that time to time we do lot of brainstorming that what all uh, industry is looking forward in next 6 months or let's next one year and there are two kind of brainstorming and a uh, goal setting we do like one is short term and one is long term so the short term goals we decide our trading curriculums according to the next 6 months requisites and uh, hiring trends and the long term goals we decide for the next decade what industry is going towards so we accordingly modify our courses develop industry academy relationships and input training to the students thank you so much thank you so much. now you see uh, what is Uh, there's some disturbance so what we see over here is that uh, we are an organic uh, institute right we are very much alive to uh, the needs of the industry and in our board of studies we have uh, the representatives from uh, the industry giants so whenever we design the curriculum it is in consultation with the Uh, industry giants now coming uh, again uh, ma'am uh, uh, you see uh, design thinking is a very important strategy correct right right uh, particularly to uh, uh, you know take care of the 21st century skills right yes. so right. for that you really need to understand uh what exactly a customer requires then you develop a prototype as per the requirement of a customer and then you try it out and uh, makes necessary changes and all that so uh customer's experience and interface with the customer is very important and thus we see uh, there are certain new kinds of uh, jobs which are emerging which we call ux and ui i would love you to throw some light on that absolutely sir 
Uh, so as we were talking about UI and UX designing is user interface and user experience. So every time we buy something which is a technology based thing, or we have um, open up a website to buy something, for example, the latest, uh, you know, trends for, for example, if we see a Mintra, Agio, or anything we want to go ahead and buy, it has to be appealing to the customer for us to go ahead and buy the same. So the same how needs to be updated on an everyday basis. So here UI and UX designing comes in a, you know, plays a very, very big role. And it's not only one person in one company, there is a whole team of people who are doing this. And where, uh, for example, uh, you know, some people like to use Apple products, some people like to do use Android products, right? So it's on based on what you like to do or how comfortable are you using that? People tend to buy that more, right? For example, if I am into, you know, um, cloud uh, system and I save everything there, in future, definitely I'm going to buy a product which has cloud system. I will not go for something which is Android based and my data is not there. So they're creating, you know, their own loyal customer and how to do that so that user interface and experience is so strong is all which comes in user interface and experience. In here, I would also like to add that one thing and one skill that one person definitely needs to have and keep on learning is one needs to know how to do prototypes and wireframes, right? He needs to know how to do 3D modeling and how to make that into an experience that is unforgettable. Of course, knowledge of designing software is um, definitely comes in their course books. So visual communication, it is something like you're speaking to somebody through your website or your, your product, right? So here also you have a lot of, uh, you know, so these are all linked. So they also have a lot of unregulated data, right? And, and patterns. Now they also need to be turned into businesses and organization for future. So one part is data and one part is designing and make that user experience unforgettable. Right, sir? So this is actually a cross industry uh, avenue, yes. which is available. Yes. It is not yes. confined to a particular industry. No, sir, from, right? from tourism, from uh, you say hospitals, uh, everybody, every businessman or even a startup company needs to have their own website, right? So that a customer goes and uses it uh, and falls in love with it and keeps on. You have to have repeated businesses for it. And that com consumer experience is very engaging, right? So, so then the you know profit margin increases and that's how the companies keep on growing. So it's basically making a connect with the consumer itself, right? Right, sir. Right. Right, okay. so, and so, how so, to make this experience of the connect very comfortable, very easy, right, yes. for yes. the uh, customer. Yes. So what we see is uh, this is a new kind of uh, uh, you know uh, job sets which is uh, truly emerging, and right. it requires two kinds of skill. One is the skills which is uh, in terms of the technology, right. you know. Another is the human skills, which is required. You need to be curious. Right. You need to empathize with the person because you can understand only when, and you need to have very good communication skills. Okay. So there are human skills coupled with technological skills and all that. And as Neeraj sir explained very clearly that we take care of them through different right, ways. Sir, right, sir, right, sir. Right, so uh, going to the uh, uh, next set of careers, ma'am, uh, the third, yes. uh, this is yes, second we have dealt so far, right? Yes, yes, sir. This is the third one, which is digital marketing specialist. Again, uh, if we talk about digital marketing experience, we have to know our target audience. We need to have that understanding as a you know human skills that whom we are talking to, whom we are targeting to, whom we are you know um, selling our product to. For example, earlier this was done. If you would need to buy something, you would go in a store. You will ask the person, "Can you show me this?" They can only show you something which is available in their store, right? But nowadays the store is immense. They have 
you know, from everywhere, all the places, right? So for example, Amazon, and if I want to go to buy something, you type on it and there are hundreds of listings that they come and suddenly show that listing. So digital marketing specialist role over here becomes very, very important because it opens um, a different eye and F, uh, a setup for the customer to pay, play a part in their new businesses, right? They keep on, uh, you know, targeting digital marketing campaigns, different campaigns that happens. And these are definitely done by the specialists. You need to have marketing uh, knowledge also in it. You need to have sales, basic sales knowledge, designing, um, you know, basic sense of profitability, how profitability works. If I'm selling something at 100 rupees and the original, um, you know, uh, cost is 80. And if I'm paying, uh, you know, 30 rupees in uh, uh, my digital marketing, then it doesn't recover my cost. I need to know how much digital marketing will happen and that cost can be reduced to so that my profits and my sales increases. Right, sir? Uh, Anil sir, uh, what courses we have in KRM uh, for our students so, particularly to help them to become uh, experts in digital marketing? See, uh, since it is a new world profession, so digital marketing, data analytics, data science, they are all, you know, we do not have any specific background it is required. So it is all your inclination, your interest and your uh, calculative skills, your human skills, they all sum up to make you one specific professional for one specific job role. So I would not say that anybody from engineering background or a specific person from a general graduation background or an engineer or, or an MBA graduate can go for digital marketing. Anybody from any background can, can go for this new world profession. You need to have good inclination to understand what kind of customer base you're focusing on. You need to have good understanding what kind of product you're selling. You need to understand what competitive uh, you know, competition you are facing in the market and what all portals and channels you'll use to promote your product. So this basic information can be given and this uh, uh, basic inputs we are providing with majorly all the courses when small workshops are organized time to time wherein we give inputs related to such courses. So it is not uh, any discipline oriented or discipline specific, but it, it is a general information to all the university courses. Let's say we have done uh, recently a three-day digital work, digital marketing workshop with BCom and um, uh, BA honor students. So there also we found good, uh, you know, students who are pretty inclined to understand this concept and they are ready to go ahead with, to learn these skills. So it is not just subjected to one of the professions. It's a cross-industry skill specific program can be done with all the disciplines and all the schools in the university and that's why we're promoting it in most of the uh, you know like let's say somebody in a medical uh, pharma industry so if they want to promote their they want to be with some of the pharma uh, pharmaceutical industry there are also digital marketing platforms for those companies as well so being an information with the core knowledge is about pharmacology plus promoting it or digitally becomes digital marketing so that person can become a professional in pharma industry for marketing to digital platforms. So this is absolutely a new world profession. So cannot subject it to one of the profession, one of the backgrounds, it is subjected throughout the university, pan university. So our uh, USP basically becomes like this, that whenever something new is emerging, we are bringing in experts from outside, organizing right. workshops for our students right. and providing a, them yes, basic sir. skills. Right. As I previously told you that every three to four months, we have a brainstorming session with the senior management. And in that brainstorming sessions, we put forward the latest trends emerging into the industry in the short term goals. So in that short term goals, we introduce such short workshops with the students so that they are in touch with the in industry. Despite they, any background they belong to, it does not matter. What matters most is that if they have that inclination, the right skill set to go ahead with the new world profession, new world job, he should not be, you know, uh, left behind just because he doesn't know it. So it, it is it, it's something which we keep on giving input to all the schools about the latest professions. So, uh, you know, to my students and uh, those who are attending, I'd like to say one point that 
केआर मंगलम इज बेसिकली अ मल्टी डिसिप्लिनरी यूनिवर्सिटी now here uh, if you are familiar with the new education policy uh, it has advocated for it what does it mean what does it mean so here uh, the liberty is given to the student to create one's own degree that means like you may be you may might would have selected that okay i want to pursue my undergraduate in psychology honors right and while pursuing it you are you feel that you are interested to understand certain aspects of law also right certain aspects regarding data also because ultimately you will be using the data to help uh, your uh, clients okay so here every semester we give you a choice to choose electives right so even if you are a student of law you are interested in photography you can choose in one of the semesters you can choose something like that so apart from the workshop which are organized which are open to all the students right you have certain semesters also certain electives available to you you can choose second thing which is very important is to develop particularly uh, because uh, industry is uh, now you know a lot of integrated industries where we are working together is emerging you know so we carry uh, another pedagogy with us is that uh, we are working on project based uh, pedagogy project based learning what i will say is that here uh, uh, students of different disciplines they gather they create a project and then they work on that project and they learn from each other for example right now in kr mangram we are carrying out a project uh to understand the water resources of the neighborhood areas of the um, kr mangalam university so when you uh, try to understand the water resources you are try to find out how much is the water table at a particular place now this is primarily agriculture work but here chemistry uh, branches also involved physics branches also involved those who are interested in uh, uh, can make a fantastic presentation of whatever are the finding they are also involved in that, right so the basic skills of collaboration working together learning new uh, skills uh, uh, say digital skills uh, this is we ensure through various projects like uh, for this drone is uh, being used for this purpose and you know uh, we have a collaboration with uh, mumbai uh, iit for that okay so the robotics club of uh, mumbai uh, iit uh, we have a, a, a you know lab over here in our university uh, students are creating those kind of a things from the engineering department and this facility is being used by the uh, agriculture department and all that so thereby creating so kind so uh, kind of facilities so that you can acquire it's a combination of two three disciplines working for the same objective i'm also part of it sir so yeah. the engineering student and the <laughs> environmental students and right in the you know leadership of vc saab this this project is undergoing and uh, so the the core knowledge students core subject students are finding the you know the details and then the technology part is handled by the engineering department and then the the analysis and prediction part is handled by the third humanitarian person who is you know making so the this, 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 uh, this is very important because in industry ultimately one has to work like this only so what right. we are creating over here in kr mangalam is the in order to make you a real professional where collaboration is really needed you need to read to work in a team you need you need to understand how uh, other people think how other knowledge can be integrated with your knowledge right right so this is given you we give you a first hand exposure to it in the university itself you know so right. primarily when this uh, uh, data uh, what you call digital marketing came and when so 
you are not only learning in that very semester what digital marketing is the mba students are doing that but through various workshops by collaborating with others uh, you are because our agriculture department is uh, uh, into organic farming and now they right. are producing uh, they are having a lot of produce marketing yeah the, the produce done. comes in every 15 20 days and, and the marketing is done so here you yeah. are exposure to that also right, right. so now uh, going further ma'am uh, the fourth one yes sir it's a social media influencer and youtuber i'm sure everybody uh, you know likes to watch them and uh, there are so many platforms that they're uh, you know uh, enhancing their skills on if you you have communication skills you like to speak you have knowledge and you have content the main uh, thing here is creating content if you are so creative and you can be your own boss you can go ahead and start your youtube channel and you can have your social media influencer and you also uh, you know people and companies pays you to give uh, you know honest reviews so this is sudden sudden increase of social media influencer youtube but here every channel is is not watched so there are few happy people who have really 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 done well uh, i would like to name few mr beast is there if you go watch the his videos it is really interesting it's different from what other people are doing so here the x factor your x factor comes in play your x factor your skills uh, which are human skills play the most your empathy skills plays the most in this kind of a futuristic uh, career right so and this one this career also you know people pay you to make videos people uh, want you to create those videos or uh, for example you need to have little bit knowledge of the lightning how you would look um, if you would see in the market these there are so many products available now for them and now these products are available for them when this is available everybody tries to copy but everybody is not successful in it if you have knowledge and if you've done your uh, education also according her i'm sure you can do wonders in this as well right sir moving ahead uh, one um, uh, you know now i like to uh, uh, make some points uh, uh, what krm has done especially uh we have one school of uh, you know uh, mass communication sjmc right? school of journalism and communication sir yeah so mm -hmm. uh, uh media when we talk very clearly in fact we organized a, a few days back only one webinar on this and we were talking about it how to use the social media uh, you know because social media everyone uses so how social media can be used by tourism industry how social media can be used by uh, for marketing itself right so then came another aspect to it that uh, how you can produce uh, you know videos of different kind using different kind of technologies so uh, there came uh, a very wonderful uh, idea uh, that how now uh, people can use the virtual reality and augmented reality to create very different kind of videos to create different kind of advertisements and all that suppose in a hotel industry you want to promote your hotel itself and all that so how your hotel looks you you can give a feel of the lobby the the menu or the other facilities what should be to anyone yeah. without them visiting it you know so uh, this industry uh, as a, a you know uh, working on youtube or working on social media is coming in big way because uh the number of smartphones uh if you take uh, india itself the way it is rising five years back there were few uh, millions and now we are uh, running into billion you know that is the number of the growth is this so and most of them are using smartphones most of them are using smartphones even in villages the study reveals so 
so the social media becomes a very very powerful tool and all that and using it for different purposes is leading to very strong opportunities uh, uh, from the future job points of view right sir uh, next ma'am so we're going to talk about blockchain engineer which very i'm sure very few people must have heard about it but they know uh, with the word crypto when the crypto comes in mind i'm sure a lot of people have heard that but how it happens and how uh, you know blockchain is there there are very few people in the market who are doing it but whoever is doing is minting money these days uh, you know, uh, there are two kind of uh, things uh, in blockchain where we talk about, uh, yeah, you know, one is person who develops the cryptocurrency, okay, who develops the cryptocurrency. And then second one is the application developers who make those applications and who, um, you know, uh, develop that application and it reaches everywhere. So it is a very decentralized system in a layman's term. Uh, when there's a le uh, decentralized system, the security here becomes a major factor. So how to improve that security, how to bring in that security so that uh, a lot of money is involved in that, in that, in that case, the security becomes a prime issue. Um, you know, a lot of big, uh, big giants are buying a lot of cryptocurrency and their currency is increasing. And there are few who develop those currency and there are few who would, you know, uh, become application developers who will uh, reach out to a system. So they create a blockchain, something like which is interconnected by each and everybody. So to break that blockchain is very difficult and the security plays a part in it. So these engineers are hired by a lot of companies and various companies and diverse industries so that um, they can use the blockchain technology. In this also you develop coins. Um, there are, uh, when we talk about currency, there is, we talk, talk in terms of coins. There is one coin, there's two coin, three coin. And these are developed by the core people who, uh, who started uh, the whole industry or who probably are the co-founders of the, uh, you know, whole, uh, uh, you say company. And then they hire a lot of blockchain engineers uh, further on, they hire a lot of software developers along with it, and they need proficiency in programming the most, the most. And they also have people who have worked in cybersecurity uh, to make sure that uh, their currency is safe and is always in the market. Right, sir? So in this, again, we need all kind of those skills working on Python, working on SQL, working on the system R, where I think uh, these days, 96% of companies buy the data are using these three programming skills. If you have a proficiency in either of this, that suddenly gives you an edge on other people, right? And, uh, you know, it's a very lucrative career. It's a very lucrative career and it's a very different career. And it also involves the concern and empathy of other people that how you secure their money because when money is involved, you become very, very certain and very, very careful about it. And, you know, this part of blockchain engineer is one, uh, one thing where, uh, you know, is increasing like anything in India. India is focusing on IT products and IT companies the most in their budgets as well. So when this happens, we can predict the future that this is going to be another upcoming career option that a student can apply and can take for future. And similarly, sir, Neeraj sir, if you'd like to add something in this, yeah, sure, ma'am. Yes. Since uh, lately, even I was one, I'm also one of the investors in the cryptocurrencies and I've been yeah. attending a lot of seminars here. So um, there are many coins which have recently uh, phased up and uh, it is a, a, my personal uh, approach, approach about it is that it seems to be very volatile 
and high high end uh, high risk high volume uh, yes. kind of investment is there yes. so but even after i'll say there are a lot of there is a separate group there are separate uh, industry which has built up in last 2 to 3 years for this and lot of young lot of students of ours like you know um, they've been approaching us ki sir we need inputs on cryptocurrency blockchain supply technology out happens there there are two different uh, a categorization in this business then there are uh, somebody who is into mining who understands the mining process and set up all that big mining projects and and then there are people who are into trading who are into you know uh, uh, selling buying and of course uh, doing uh, something related to it so we have lately organized two workshops for understanding what is blockchain supply systems and how crypto emerges and how crypto works since it is none of the universities in the world has a uh, organized core structure for it because this whole industry itself is not that well organized because it itself is decentralization of money where your money travels throughout the world and then there are several super computers who calculate it validate it and then you receive your money in other part of the corner of the world since there is no certain bank says that there is no authority over this money and there is no there are no transaction charges which is the benefit of it so there is no such course yet has been organized or introduced uh casual seminars are always there and casual input of information wherein student at least know that what is this whole thing of blockchain supply at the same time crypto i mean i'm specifically talking about blockchain supply in terms of cryptocurrency right right so uh, we have given inputs to our student and time to time we organize lot of discussion sessions with our students yeah so this so, is what we have been updating with our uh, student and there is no such uh, you know uh, uh, i have i've noticed there is no such set parameter like if somebody I, from uh, management or engineering again it's a new world profession it's no new world kind of business there is no such parameters that only engineering or management students are approaching us <laughs> i've seen students from background of journalism i've seen students background from arts background and even students from the background of uh, pharma they also have lot of inclination lot of information about these investments and they they come to us to take input and so as soon as we receive such uh, applications we see receive such requisitions and once there are a number of 10 to 15 we try to bring in some expert from the industry expert somebody who's you know dealing with this such stuff and we try to organize a uh, casual talk with the student wherein they can have an open session open forum to discuss to give their ideas to understand how it goes learn how to calculate the risk of that and learn how what would be the future progression however it is non completely non predictable but still with few of the tips they can always understand the progression of this business in recent future so yes. as if say that we are not totally out of the touch we are definitely with touch of such things which are running into the market creating a lot of uh, waves into it these days and we keep our students updated for that right so it basically also involves you know uh, a block so we go for the next way. profession ma'am now all right all right sir okay so sir as you were also discussing earlier social media manager uh, it's different from your digital digital marketing because a social media manager is going to be the whole uh, complete person who is going to take care of your digital marketing as well your so there are going to be two parts in this there going to be a textual one <coughs> and graphic so if uh, you know something who somebody who has very good written skills can also go into this and also have um, you know get get into copywriting one can obviously uh, you know the plan and implement social media campaigns for businesses brands and make their brands more successful and they have uh, you know they also increase uh, their profitability they they help them to you know get into public eyes um their customer engagement programs that they keep on uh, doing uh, for uh, you know which gain popularity for example they will you give a influencer uh you know some a, a certain amount of product or they will for, for example even if it's a makeup product or any other product that is in existence they will tell them to do reviews on it they will make a whole uh, 
uh, you know, uh, from A to Z, the whole program and show it and uh, present it and take care of the whole thing. So even in social media, uh, you know, manager is going to be very lucrative. They should have uh, knowledge of video design, how video should be designed. Um, they also, so, you know, it's a very uh, fast growing. So we have uh, at Care Manglam, I guess, a uh, fashion uh, design as well, where, uh, you know, they know they should know how we should be popping out as in if there is a screen behind how a person pops out, how the lightning works, how, um, how to make anything, even a small thing presentable that, and so presentable that the other person is compelled to buy is the work of a social media manager. And I'm sure, sir, there are programs in line with the same setup. Right, Minister? Yes, ma'am, you correctly said that uh, this is a newly emerging profession and a job role, which is social media manager. And, and not just with normal people, with the celebrities also, we can see that yeah. a lot of social media teams are supposed to be there in place wherein everything they publicly say, everything they publicly like, dislike, make a statement, they have to be very particular about the image consulting. So it is more about image consulting of anybody. So these days uh, with the, uh, our uh, School of Journalism and Mass Communication has one of the modules which talks about social media managing, which is one of the uh, non-ignorant aspect of these days. And uh, even the countries make their, uh, countries make their governments on basis of social media these days. So this is a very huge uh, and a powerful tool with any of the country's um, uh, existence and the future. So we have certain modules in our School of Journalism and Mass Communication where we help our students to understand the power of social media and how to create and uh, you know, do the image consultation through social media. Most of the celebrities, politicians, social figures, sports persons, they all need social media managers for all the social media accounts. And time to time, we also help them to do case studies on it. During the time of their interns, they go and do a lot of case studies on specifically on social media management. And they understand that the how minor issues in mismanagement of your social media image might create a blunder to your career, might create a blunder to your society as well. So uh, yeah. we provide full exposure to social media management and social media manager profile in our current School of Mass in Journalism and Mass Communication where students have been exposed to it and time to time they're sent to a lot of media houses, a lot of news channels to understand the power of it also. Right. So, when we, uh, so the other uh, question, which is an online advertising manager is a part of social media as well. It is... Founded in the digital marketing as well. So uh, this um, most of the professions which you'll see, which are they, maybe it's a data important. scientist, data analysis, they all somehow interconnect each other in one or another term. And of course, they form a good team because for running any organization, for running uh, any project, for running any any individual business, we need to associate all the basic professions, professionals, and the job roles which we have mentioned here. So that's why they are the future ready job roles. We are in, in any organization which is selling or collecting any data or doing any calls into this society in today's world, they all need to have such teams of these profession who can help them to, you know, achieve their purpose to reach to their objective. And that's why we call them these all uh, job roles are very, very crucial and they're going to be there at least two decades. And this is the new industry 4.0, wherein Credentials does not matter that much, but competencies, your inclination, along with your human skills, decide that what performance and what role you're going to take in the society. And here, we care, Mangalam, we are valuing it all the time. We have been providing them all the basic understanding, all the contemporary courses with, of course, the workshops, the train department, and the introduction of all the new technologies, combination of future alliances, combination of industrial campaign alliances, along with an approach which talks them to take them to the futuristic targeted career planning. Right. So, so uh, next on, man. Yes, next even man. an um, online advertising manager, if we talk about what does what, what do they do? They bring business digital ads on various platforms. Which uh, platform is running most? Uh, for a few that we even haven't heard, a right ad that the right platform makes a lot of difference. 
a lot of difference. So, you know, if I want to buy something which is not related to, and that ad comes on something which I'm, uh, you know, on an education site or any other site, it doesn't make sense of that. So one needs to have that uh, creative knowledge and business, uh, business sense where they can go ahead and advertise their digital ads on various platforms. You need to have the core marketing skills that we talk about when we talk about having advertisement uh, manager here. They work, you know, in digital teams, analyze uh, their audience as well, and they, you know, um, create a, a so, whole... So ex expanding it further, I would like to add here, this, this particular job role is one of the part of the digital marketing module we have. Mm -hmm. And the digital marketing module talks more about understanding your audience, first of all, the target audience, the kind of product you're selling, and mapping the right audience. So it involves a lot of digital marketing and data science and data analysis. So again, yes. it's a combination of, of the three job roles, which are new world jobs, which actually help you to perform the function from the end-to-end uh, -end solution, right? So once right. you know what data generates, like, like if I can give a small example here, like on Saturdays, if you go to a mall, nearby mall, there are a lot of data in check-ins happen. So by collecting that data, you may come to know that on a particular day, how many check-ins happen and how many shoppings and what kind of shopping spree happened on a particular day. If we study the data for next three months, we can find out and on which day, on which of the products we can give discounts and which of the products we can keep on the backside. So this will help us and help the customer to understand and find the right product easily. And it can create an easy spree of shopping for anybody who's coming on that particular day. So the yes, I think, ma'am, we are running short of time now. All right, sir, already, right? Okay. Yes, sir. So uh, it was very interesting and a wonderful discussion, and uh, uh, speaks very clearly that uh, how KRM is uh, keeping a pace with the upcoming changes in the industry, in the field of right. uh, uh, career, and uh, ensuring that the students are prepared. So in right. KRM, the most important aspect we take care of is uh, we provide you with basic skills, which help you to acquire more skills. So our motto is very clearly that we are not making you learn certain things for a particular time period only, but we are preparing you a perennial learner, a lifelong learner, right? So right. that uh, the industry may require a different kind of specific, but you are ready for it. And you are always working on to update your skills. This is what exactly we stand for. So uh, Correct, uh, sir, uh, if I have, uh, uh, if I'm right now is the time to showcase what exactly is our university all about, right? So that I'll, I'll, uh, so I'll uh, share the screen for the presentation. If you have a permission mm -hmm. to me. Yeah, please, please. Is the screen visible, sir? Uh, yes. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Great. So <clears throat> this is a uh, basic PowerPoint presentation about our university, which talks about the activities, the courses we offer, the activities going on, and um, the rest of the useful stuff which a student or any aspirant should know. So KR Mangalam University, we the tagline is complete world of education, and uh, it's empowering the youth, empowering the nation. So. We have more than 3,000 students with us. We have 11 schools and we have 10,000 strong alumni base, 26 sacred campus and 150 more. And now it's more than 150 faculties. Uh, we are situated uh, around 20 kilometers from Gurgaon and it's in the vicinity, which is open, clear, very wide with all the amenities and, and modern art facilities we are available with. Uh, we have separate departments for all the academics, all the schools, and then we have a separate career development center as well, which includes placements and training too. So we work on, you know, outcome-based system, education system, transform young minds, future leaders, interdisciplinary project, which then we talked about a lot of things which are not discipline specific, they're interdisciplinary because the new world professions talks more about mixing of all the learnings. So that, that we practice a lot here, 
we have a great campus life. Students love to be into the campus, and we have a lot of academia support from big giants like IBM, NSC, SSM, Siemens, Symmetrix, Rivia, etc. And we have developed a lot of virtual and physical uh, labs from these giants into the campus. So there are various courses we offer for engineering. We have CSC, we have engineering in computer science, we have engineering computer science specifically for artificial intelligence, machine learning. We have CSC in cloud computing. We have CSC in full stack development, front end, back end, both in collaboration with Zebia. We have CSC, as I told you, we have collaboration with Symmetrix, we have collaboration with IBM. So these are industry specific collaborations and we have labs of these uh, organizations set up in our uh, university campus. And on their academic support, we work on these. You know. Then we have uh, management, uh, School of Management and Commerce, BBA, BCom. We have, you know, uh, uh, what do we say? Domain specific trainings, domain specific programs. We have basic and applied sciences. We have medical sciences, pharma, and master in pharmacy. Agriculture sciences, BSc in agriculture. As I told you, there are complete fields where we develop <laughs> a lot of uh, organic crops and organic products. We have we have been developing we have been to developing a lot of uh, jams, jellies, and you know pickles, organic pickles lately. So we pack them and we market it to the you know open um, uh, structure and we sell it as organic products. And all it is developed by the academic department and the students to give them hands-on learning. So this is something which we are teaching. We are doing it as well. So for even even engineering also we have a lot of labs. We have labs of Android systems. We have labs of uh, uh, we have labs of Mac labs. We have labs related to, as I told, uh, industry academia collaborations. So anything which is related to industry, we have done collaborations. We have labs. With. Then we have School of Legal Studies, BA, BLLB, BCom, LLB, and BBLLB, LLB, LLM. We have all the programs with that. Uh, journalism, communication. We have discussed it. Humanities. We have a lot of programs in langu langu languages. We have programs in English, Chinese. We have programs in psychology, political science. Education, we have BA, education, Bachelor of Education, Bachelor of Elementary Education, and MA. Then we have Hotel Management, School of Hotel Management and Technology, and the network program is PhD for all disciplines. So this was the list of the programs. So this is one of the stories, entrepreneurial stories of PR Mangalam, Muhammad Yusuf, founder and CEO of Adunifi. And he was like uh, one of the alumni here, and he has done uh, wonders with his organizations. And the GC, you could brief about him a little bit if you have an yes, idea. Yes, yes, definitely. He was, uh, in fact, doing um, the BBA from KR Mangalam, uh, one of the real uh, good uh, students at that time as well. He is, in fact, uh, you know, now um, uh, into creating. So he does not have even identify. Now he is also uh, into creator and founder of various other uh, Gen Z programs and uh, companies. So he has founded two or three more companies already and is a CEO and a co-founder in those ones as well. Right? Great. So right. This is one of the entrepreneurship stories we have. And uh, going ahead, these are the industry collaborations with IBM, Symmetrix, Siemens, LinkedIn, and NSC Academy. And um, see, they, there are many of them, but specifically when we talk about industry academy programs and the industry academy support, we are in MU, MU with these all the organizations, these industry giants, and we are keep on doing act, at least uh, seven to eight activities to prove that MOU justified with every school. So more than 50 plus collaborations we have, national and international collaboration. More than 50 plus. I think, sir, uh, there is some problem with the internet with New York, sir. We can... Neeraj, sir, we cannot uh, hear you. We go to the next slide. Sir, uh, he's the host, so he's changing the slides. Okay. Anyhow, uh, going yeah. further into the yes. university, uh, uh, maybe the slides are not moving, but I can definitely yes. touch upon uh, this. Right. Right. See, uh, uh, as I said very clearly, that we are uh, basically, uh, now you are a co-host, you can. Yes, yes. I have the uh, other, uh, so I can, yeah. We are a very much uh, student-centric university. 
and uh, we take care of every aspect of yours right Thanks. so what we do is that uh, uh, as far as the fee structure is concerned, if you compare it with other universities uh, in the neighborhood, uh, maybe from Punjab or Haryana, Rajasthan or Bihar, we are the least, right? right. So both for uh, you know technical as well as non-technical courses. Then right. as far as the scholarship is concerned, we provide many scholarships, some of the scholarships cover even 100% of your fees, right? We have special scholarships for the siblings. We have scholarship for the armed forces uh, children. We have scholarship for uh, the sports quota. So uh, if you see over here, uh, no aspect is left behind. Okay? Right. Then come into it that we have a very simple procedure of uh, uh, you know uh, admission. You just need to, of course, uh, CUET is one exam you might would have appeared two days back only, right? Uh, uh, so uh, we give fast track admission to through the CUET, but otherwise you can uh, come. You can meet our uh, the admission team, you have to appear for a small test. Uh, then it is followed by interactions. Uh, then uh, you have to fill in the form, you are registered with us. If you pay the fees, you are a part of our university. Uh, regarding uh, the placement cell, as uh, uh, Dr. Neera Singh was with us, right? Unfortunately, because of some internet issues, uh, we are missing him out now. Uh, we have a special cell itself, and he heads that training cell and placement cell, uh, whereby uh, we not only uh, get in touch with the industries or industries visit us, but we prepare you for uh, exams. Uh, uh, exams, interviews, etc. Yes, sir. Then. Uh, uh, our record so far is like this, that uh, we had a placement of, of our, one of our engineering students, our uh, package was 24 lakh. Right. Sir. Right. And uh, one of our students from, uh, uh, who did his MBA with us, and uh, then he is a data analyst basically. Uh, he is working with the Israel Embassy in Canada, right? right? And our entrepreneur, Mohammed, you just uh, uh, oh, saw, right? Uh, we have uh, uh, in the placement uh, around 450 plus companies visit us. Uh, they offer us different kind of jobs, more than 600 and plus jobs are offered, more right. than 90 plus uh, uh, students get job. Now you might be wondering 90 plus only getting placement. What about the 10 plus, right? So these 10 plus are the ones who choose entrepreneurship because we right. have an entrepreneur's cell uh, in the university and we have papers on entrepreneur where, where we teach about all about entrepreneurship. It is a part of different courses. And we have an incubation cell also in the university wherein we bring the investors. They, uh, uh, you know, they understand your, uh, you make a presentation about your idea to them. Right. And, and uh, those investors are ready to invest in uh, your ideas and help you to start or initiate your own business. Right. So you say, uh, sir, the incubation cell helps you to even, uh, uh, you know, create those skills uh, like personal character, interpersonal skills, and also help in funding in future. Yeah. For their course. future funding. Yes, sir. Right. right. So uh, this was all about our university. Right. right? Sir. Thank you so much for Thank joining you, us. It was and uh, uh, one point I would say. Uh, right. We are very much open and transparent. So if you want 
this was just a, a you know online explanation of what exactly is uh, 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 the way we work best is as we say the taste of the pudding is in eating it you Hi. visit us yes. feel the campus meet the students listen to their experiences if you have doubts meet the faculty meet our deans and heads visit our labs and then decide whether you want to be a part of the kr mangalam family we right. look forward up to our motto standing up to our motto empowering youth and empowering the nation so uh, i would say uh, before coming please make a phone call and our number is 011 488 488 Correct. and our teams would be there to welcome you to take you through the uh, you know campus to answer any of your queries we look forward to meet you thank you so much for joining us on this saturday and our special thanks to ma'am uh, thank you, for enlightening us about the future careers and uh, my colleague uh, dr uh, Niraj Singh, uh, his uh, everyone can understand how passionate he is about trainings, how passionate he is about giving us, you know, uh, the best of the best and the latest possible to the students. Right. right. So thank right. you so much for joining thank us. You, thank you, everyone. And we look forward. Right, sir. Right, sir. Right. Thank you. So thank much. you. Right, sir. With that, we close the session. Right.